Hello. Good morning, Hello. teacher. Yes, Good Sarah. morning. How are you today? We are fine, thank are you. Fine. Are you are fine. You are in a, a, a weekend mood, eh? Not all of us. <laughs> the majority. By now, your numbers would have been more than this, but I see only 26. Okay. So do we give them some a uh, few minutes or we give them five minutes, then we start? We give them yes, five teacher. minutes. Did you remember to come with your UCE books? Yes. You rem did you remember? You forgot? No, teacher. Do you have them? Yes. Okay. All of you? or just a few of you. I thought today it would be easier if we just turn to the UCE book, I give you the year, and then we do, so that we reduce on the reading, eh? And all that. What do you think? Yes, teacher. Okay. So as we wait for the girls, you're going to go to 2013, paper one. 2013. Paper one. So 2013, paper one, we shall start with number four. You could put it down in your books. 2013, paper one, number four. At least I think all of us should be able to attempt uh, part A. So can you try it? You construct the frequency distribution table, then we shall go ahead to the model class. So we can start, we can try it as we wait for the others to come in, try it. 2013, if there's anyone who doesn't have it, please tell me early enough. If you want me to write it, I can write it. But it, if all of us have the UCE book, we are looking at 2013, paper one, number four. Teacher, please may you write it? Not all of us have. Yeah, not okay. all of us have. But you have to make an effort to get it because it would be very good to have a number, a good number of questions for you to do. Okay? Yes, teacher. Thank you. 
Okay, so if we don't have our books, the question is on the board. We have two parts we are doing. From the data we've been given, we are going to construct a frequency distribution table. This time, our class width, uh, you can identify it, but our class is ranging from 21 up to 30. Then they've asked us to state the model class. So can we quickly draw our frequency distribution table? And then we shall determine our model, our model class. Please, given data that is not grouped, make sure you are careful. Because once you fail the frequency, then you, you will not be able to get the other parts of the question. So it is 21 up to 30. So definitely you must know your next class. What will your next class be? Let's dig it and see how far you go. And then we group, we group our data. So in our table, have we started to group the data? No. Yes, teacher. Okay, what, what are the columns you have in your table? What columns do you have? Kali. Class. You first have the class. Uh huh. Kali. Kali. Then you have the tally and then? Frequency. 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 That is all. When you look at the question, they are not asking for anything more than that. So your, your table should have only three columns, the class, the tally, and the frequency. So can we work that one out first? Excuse me, teacher. Yes, please. Is there the number 65? The one after 59 on the last column. Yes, this is 65. It's not clear. It is 65. Thank you, teacher. It is 65. And we didn't time ourselves. We should have given ourselves five minutes to finish our table. What is your last class? 61. Okay, very good. Please put up your hand, 61 to 70. We should be finalizing, isn't it? No. And not yet. Okay, Not I'm giving you five minutes. Write your table, tally frequency. Okay, how far have we gone? Are we done? Almost.
Okay, so what is our frequency for the first class, 21 to 30? What is your frequency? 21 to 30? Two. 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 So if you have two, then that is correct. Then the next class would be five. what? 31 to five. What? Teacher, uh, five. 21 five. to 45. Okay. Five. Please, let's be orderly, put up your hand, give me the answer. Then the next class would be 41 to? 50. 50, and what is the frequency? 12. 12. 12. Sure. Yeah. Do we all have 12? Yes, yeah. teacher. Yes, teacher. Yeah. yeah. Do we all have 12? We can cross check. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that is 41 to 50, this is one. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, three, four, 10, 11, 12, 13. Why do I count 13? Can you count again? Check your work and see. Is it 12, is it 13? Check 13. It is 13. So you see, we've still made a mistake. Okay, Victoria, your hand is raised. Yes, Teacher, Mickey. you included the 48. Teacher, you included 48. It's 41 to 50, not 40 to 50. Very good. Very good observation. So you are in class. 41 to 50, so they are 12. Okay, thank you, Victoria. 41 to 50, they are 12. So, uh -huh, next class. 51 to 60. 51 Five. to 60, what do you have? Five. 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 Okay, Five. then 61 to 70. Six. Five. Five. Six. Six. Five. Six. 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 Five. Six. 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 To 70. It's six. So the frequency is six. So if you've done it right, first class has a frequency of two, second class has a frequency of five, third class has a frequency of 12, fourth class has a frequency of four, fifth class has a, a frequency of, sorry, fourth class has a frequency of what, five? Five. Yes. Five. And then the last one has a frequency six. of six. six. Okay. So what is our total frequency? I expect party. Okay. Thank if you me. have party, then it, because they told us our number of students are how many? 30. So you check yourself to see that you've done the right thing. Now we have done our table. Part B says, what is the model class? Now that word model comes from the word 30. Oh. Have you met that word before? Yes, teacher. Statistics, when we talk about mode, who can give us the answer? What are we looking for? Mode. The mark that the appears the most. Many times. The mark Put up your hand. hand. Let's be orderly. Nantume? The number that appears many times. The number that appears the most times. So when they say, what is the mode? You give us that number. This time, our question is not asking for just mod, but it's asking for model class. Who can tell me what, what would write? When they say model class. 41 to 50. This time, it is the class, rather. What would it be? 
Very good, the class with the highest frequency. So when they say model class, we are writing the class. If it is simply mod, we are writing the number that is appearing the most times. Very good. So state the model class. Our model class is 41 to 50. Now, if they wanted to know how many times that, that, that what the frequency is, then they would ask you for what is the model frequency, okay? If they asked for what is the model frequency, then they would be asking you for the highest frequency. Are we together? So what would you tell me if the question was, what is the model frequency? What would you tell me? 12. Are we together? So when yeah. it is model frequency, it will be the highest frequency. Model class, it will be the class with the highest frequency. So can we write a note there? A note, and you say the model class, the model class is the class with the highest frequency. The model class is the class with the highest frequency, which is 41 to 50. The model class is the class with the highest frequency, which is 41 to 50. And the model frequency, and the model frequency is the highest frequency. The model frequency is the highest frequency, which is the model frequency is the highest frequency, which is 12, okay? Are we through any questions on that number? Teacher, how is it 12? How is it? Put up your hand and I know who's asking. How is it 12? We yes. worked out the, the, the frequencies. After your tally, what was the value you got for 41 to 50? What was your frequency for that class? By the way, who's asking me? It's good to know who's asking. Yes, please. Faith. Faith. Okay. Faith. I'm asking. What was your frequency for that class, 41 to 50? What did you get? No answer. Mm -hmm. You got 12. Now, I'm, bring, I'm bringing in a new term. Which term is model, fre model frequency? OK? Now, if your question was asking for model frequency, it is the, the number that okay we had five we had 12 we had five and we had six so the highest of those two of those of those figures was 12 so 12 becomes the highest frequency so when they when they want they want to ask you what is the highest frequency the term for it is model frequency so if they say what is the model frequency we are looking for the highest frequency. So you simply say that the model frequency is 12. And that class, okay, that has the highest frequency is what we call the model class. That's why in the question, they didn't ask you for mod. If it is mod, then you'd have to actually find the exact value, okay? We'd have to find the exact value. But when they tell you model class, just simply give us the class with the highest, frequency. That's why I gave it to you in the note that if it is model class, simply look out for the class with the highest frequency. And from our number, our class is 41 to 50. Then if it is mod, model frequency, simply give us the highest figure, which is 12. Is that okay? But when they ask you for the mod, then we'd have to actually either calculate it or estimate it. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. So when we get to that, the last time we, we met, we were able to actually work out the mean in two ways. And then today we are going to find out how can we estimate the mode. So remember when it was mean, we said our two methods are either summation of fx over the summation of f. Okay, we either use that or it will be your working mean plus the summation of fd over the summation of f. So those are the two methods you can use to work out our mean. So today we are going to find out mode. We started with modal frequency. We've already known that the mode is the number that appears the most times. So from the data you had, we were able to work out the model, I mean the model class. Now, when you go to number 14 of the same year, 2013, number 14, I'm going to write it down here and then we'll see how to handle it. This time they want us to estimate the mod. So we are going to find out how do we estimate the mod? So our question is number 14, So this time we have been given a table with the number of students already. So in, if we're asked to draw a, 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 a frequency distribution table, we don't need to write the tally. 
because the frequency has already been given. Now, we are going to look at um, the questions in there, but first I'm going to give you my, my first question will be different. And this one says, represent, the first question is going to be different from what you have in the book. Represent the given data. On a bar graph. Okay. So in our book, they've asked us to represent the given data on a histogram. So that's another way of representing our data. But first, we are going to represent it on a bar graph. Now, you've already seen bar graphs. In our discussions, we've already met what bar graphs are. You're representing data. You've done it in geography. So here they want us to show us, they want us to show the marks that the children are getting and how many children are getting those marks. And the children, the, the marks have been uh, classified and our range is four. From 10 to 14, those are four. At five, I mean 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So our class width is five. Now, when we are representing information on a bar graph, the classes are normally on the horizontal axis. The classes are on the horizontal axis. I don't know if you'll be able to see on the board, but I'll try to draw something small. So if this is my horizontal axis and this is my vertical axis, you see that line, eh? So the bottom line is my horizontal axis. The top line going up is your vertical axis. We just draw bars that are representing these numbers. So our first bar is 10 to 14, okay? And our frequency is what? Three. So when you're, you're looking at your vertical axis, you can choose a scale for yourself. If my highest figure is 23, we normally use three quarters of the graph paper. Okay, if we're using three quarters of the graph paper, you could decide to say, is my scale going to be two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, up to that, it might be too big. Or you say you're going to use a scale of every two centimeters is five units. So you'll have five, 10, 15, 20, 25. I think that would be better. So if, we, if if I draw this as my vertical scale, are you able to see this vertical line? Yes? No, Not really. Uh -huh. If this is your vertical line, do you see that line? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, if that is your vertical line, if my zero is here, I can choose a scale of every two centimeters is five. Okay? Every two centimeters is five. And how do I know two centimeters? We choose two boxes and every box there contains five smaller boxes. Is that okay? Are we together? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So let me see if the line will come out better here. If this was my vertical scale, okay? And I'm starting at zero here. My two centimeters will be five. Another two centimeters will be 10. Another two centimeters, we are 15. This will be 20 and then 25, okay? And you label that, that axis, the frequency, okay? Every time we draw a graph, we make sure that we label it. So that will be the frequency. And then you come down here, and those will be the classes. So one thing we have to note when we are representing our work on a bar graph, all the columns must have the same width. So if you decide that the first class is 10 to 14 and you use two centimeters to represent 10 to 14, it must be the same width for all the classes. Are we together? Is that okay? 
Am I So I want to rub off this so that I draw the diagram well. I hope all of us have put the question down. Okay. Can I rub it off? Yes. So this is zero. I've decided to use five two centimeters to represent five units. This is ten. This is fifteen. This is twenty. And this will be 25. So we have said that this is the vertical axis, which is representing frequency. And you write it out. Then down here, we are going to have our classes. Our first class was 10 to 14. So this is the class 10 to 14. And the frequency for that class was three. Three will be somewhere here, you locate it. And the column will look like that. Now, when I'm moving on to the next one, for a bar graph, I leave some space and that space must be uniform for all the columns. So if I decide to leave one unit, my next class is 15 to 19 and I'm going up to nine. So I'm leaving that space. And then remember that the width must be the same. So if I use two centimeters, this should also be two centimeters. And this time it is 15 to 19. Okay, you go to the next class. The next class is 20 to 24, maintain the width. Our frequency is 14. So you find where 14 is. This will be 20 to 24. You go to the next class, which is 25 to 29, and the frequency is 23. So you go up to 23, and that will be 25 to 29. Then the next class is 16. Space frozen. Same spacing, we are going up to eight. Eight will be that yours must be accurate. That remember that you remember. Then the last class is 40 to 44, and we are going up to two. So you make sure you can read off these, these values from your scale. So you choose a scale that is easy for you to interpret and to use. So this will be 40 to 44, and these are going to be our marks. Okay, so you label. I've labeled our maps because that is what was given us. So this would be an example of your bar graph. So our part A was supposed to represent the data here. And we normally give our graph a, a heading. So here you simply say this is a what? A bar graph. That would be your heading. Okay. You name your bar graph. And then you must always label your axis, the vertical axis, the horizontal axis. Once it is a bar graph, if it is a bar graph, remember to always leave space in between the bars and you use the classes to label whatever column you are showing us. And that will be the representation of a bar graph. 
Now, we can represent data on, a, in a, on another graph, which we are calling a histogram. So can you have that down? And then we see how different is a bar graph from a histogram. So your part B will be representing that data on a histogram. So can you have this down? It would be good if you're accurate and drawing it on a graph book. That's why I told you, please come with your graph book. So if you have it ready, please draw the bar graph on, on your graph paper. If you don't have it, please find a way because when we are drawing the histogram, we need to be more accurate. Give me the chart. Give me the chart. Yes, Nakabuye. Patuma. Teacher. Yes. Can you? One centimeter representing the classes, like provided the distance is the same one centimeter, one centimeter, and you space? It's very okay. It is up to you. It is up to you to draw a graph that really is easy for you to see. It is very okay. Okay, thank you, teacher. Yes. I, I, I say you, when it is one, when there are many columns, you could use one centimeter to represent. Uh, that class there are few when you make it bigger it looks better okay but when the columns are many please use one centimeter so that they can all fit so it's up to you look at your graph paper and see how best can i present it okay when there are fewer you can use a, a wider uh, width okay if there are more you can reduce it yes mariam are you mariam mariam Teacher, are you allowed to share the graph? I think it is okay. You can share. I don't think the shading would have something like this. You want to do something like this? Like that, huh? Yes. If it is just that background, it is okay. So we are giving ourselves five minutes, then we go to the next representation. Okay, so Angel asked a question, if it is a must to have the same interval on both the vertical and the horizontal, no, it is not. Just look at the information that you have and see, how best can I put it on the graph? You don't have to have the same, okay? Depends on what you have. It will determine the scale that you want to use. Okay, you don't have to. Yes, uh, Nakato. Nakato. Teacher, asking, is it like compulsory to write the classes in a horizontal way, or you can like write them vertically if they are long? Ah, now if you put it vertically, our bar graph, the 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 bar graph we normally have is represented this way. But I've seen those that have put the classes vertically, especially in geography, I think. But with us, when we are doing, dealing with math, normally the classes are here. Though you could put them this way, but I think this would be a better presentation. When the classes are on the horizontal axis, it is better that way. But I have seen graphs when the classes are on the vertical axis. But Please keep it this way. I think it is better, even for in Please draw the graph in, in the graph book. That's why I asked you to, to draw it. Because for the next one, I want us to do the next one, which is the histogram. We are drawing all our graphs in the graph book. It will be neater, it will be easy for you to read, and so on. Yes, Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, your hand is up. Unmute. Teacher, is, it always a must? is it always a must to leave the space in between? Like yes, if it is a bad graph, please, these spaces must be left. Okay? 
That is the difference. So the other graph we are going to draw, which is a histogram, the bars are going to be together, okay? When it is a histogram, the bars are together. But when it is a bar graph, we have spaces between the bars. So it is a mass. And I said that width must be the same for all the columns, okay? Yes, Dalin, Nagawa. Our minutes are almost up for drawing the bar graph so that we go to the next one. Nagawa. I saw Nagawa's hand up, but she's not answered. Amoni. Um, teacher. Yes, please. We, when, we, when we're writing the heading, you write it simply as bar graph, not yes. bar graph showing. Just that one. Okay, you, you, uh, the frequency, because this bar graph is simply showing the frequency <laughs> that they've asked you to represent. So simply write, when they say represent it on a bar graph, you can say just a bar graph for the data. Bar graph is enough. Then Nakato. Nakato. Teacher, me, I have three questions. Yes, please. Teacher, I was asking on the on the horizontal scale. Mm. Is it okay if you write number of students instead of frequency? Did I you see on the horizontal? You were given no, what sorry, you were given in scale. the book. Eh? You're saying um here, yeah, you're saying the vertical scale. Yes. Yeah, it is okay. You can write number of students because in any case, number of students is the frequency. So it is okay. I'm also asking. Yes, please. Is it, um, they told us in math that we should draw our graphs with pencils. Yes. Yes, please, draw your graphs with, pen, with pencil. It is better that you, what if you make a mistake, okay? If you, if you are accurate, you can draw with a pen, but it's easy for you to make a mistake. So any other question? So I think, yes. I think we are done. Yes, please. Teacher, the writings, can it also be in pencil, the writings on the graph? No, I, I prefer. You know, the pencil might be a, a little, what can I say? You, not sharp enough for you to see. So I prefer that the writings are in pen. If you've drawn everything, you can label with a pen. It is better that way. Label your access with a pen, label everything with a pen. I prefer that. Yes, Mariam. Is it one centimeter, one, one centimeter about the space? Oh, can you repeat your question? You were a bit not clear. Teacher, the, Mariam, like, yes, please. The measurements, is it one, one centimeter between the bars when you're skipping? You, you, it is up to you. If, if you have a few columns and you decide to give it a width of one centimeter, please maintain it. It must be one centimeter. Same width in between the columns, okay? Depending on how many columns you have and what you have decided to use as your width, please maintain it between the columns. Yes, Nakato. Writings on the on the vertical and horizontal. Is it a must that they should go straight? What do you mean straight? Like um on the vertical scale, can you like turn the hey, page? You back? can write it this way, like this. Yes. Something like that. Yes. Are you saying that? Writing is yes, that. Yes. Is this what you are asking? Yes, teacher. It's what I was yeah, asking. it is okay. It is okay. You can label it this way. You can label it that way. It is okay. 
Now, can we look at the second type of presentation of data, which is using a histogram, which is what our question was asking. Represent the given data on a histogram. So what is the difference? I say the difference between these two is that the columns in a histogram are together. So when I'm drawing the histogram, let me just sample something small here. If my first column was there, my next column will be there. My other column will be like that. Okay, something like that and like that and so on. Okay, so which means that this is continuous. In between here, we left some space. Here I was moving from 10 to 14, okay? But then here I moved, I started with 15 to 19. So when they are together, this must be a continuous thing. So which means this time when we are writing our marks here, we are going to use what we call boundaries or limits, okay? We are going to use boundaries or limits. So you look at your class. You start with 10 to 14. How do I know the limit? What am I talking about? What is the smallest my first digit can be? What is the biggest my last digit will be? Because this is the first value of your class and this is the last value of your class. We are moving from 10 to 14. So if I need to know the limits because now my bars are together, You look at the first class, 10 to 14. How do I know the smallest this figure can be? Okay. We are going to work out the boundary or the limit. How do we get the boundary or the limit? We get the place value of the last digit in the number. And we divide that place value by two. Okay. So when you look at 10 and 14, this digit, who can give me the place value of zero? What is the place value Ones. of zero? Ones. Ones, okay. The place value of four is also ones, One. okay? One. Are we together? Yeah. So the last digit, the place value of the last digits in the number is ones. So to find our limit or boundary, we write that place value as a number. So ones is going to be one, and then we divide our one by two, and that will give us 0 0.5, okay? So when you want to know the smallest that this can go, you're going to have 10 minus the 0 0.5. Then how big, how far can we go on this other side? It will be 14 plus the 0 0.5. So <clears throat> that will give you the range. So it means my, my boundary for this class oh, is 9.5 to 14. Say, beg your pardon again. Uh, please repeat. Okay. Now, this is what I said. The histogram is different from the bar chart because this time the bars are together. So they are continuous. Is that okay? Yes, Lifer, if I go home. Lifer? Don't understand. Yes? Don't understand. No, 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 that's not a good question. Somebody said, can I please repeat? I think that one would be better. But when you say you don't understand, I don't think, Lifer, you don't understand. Yes? But you can ask a better question so that it helps me know what you want. So this is what we are doing. The first bra. Please pay attention. The first graph was a bar chart or a bar graph, and we had spaces in between. Okay, this was ten to fourteen, and we left some space. The next one was fifteen to nineteen, and so on. So we said when it is a histogram, we don't leave space in between the bars. What do we do? The bars are going to be close to each other. But remember, this was 10 to 14. So here, I cannot start with 15. Do you get it? Eh? I can't say 15 to 19. There is space, something missing here, isn't it? I can't say 14 here, then I, I said 15 again. So what do we do? 
we get the boundary, okay? What is the smallest the figures can be? What is the biggest the figures can be? So I said, how do you know the boundary of a class? You get the place value of the last digit in the number, okay? <clears throat> Zero has a place value of one. One has a place value of tens. Same here, four has a place value of one. One has a place value of tens, okay? So we write that place value as a digit. So the place value is ones, so we write a one. We divide it by two and we get what? 0 0.5, that is how you get the limit. Eh? How small the figure will be, how big the figure will be. So when I look at my class, 10 to 14, what is the smallest this can be? It will be 9.5. I can round off that 9.5 and you get what? 10, is that okay? So the smallest this class will be is 9.5. What is the biggest it will be? It will be 14.5. So my interval, my boundary for this class will become 9.5 to 14.5. Then your next class, which is 15 to 19. What is the smallest this 15 will be? It will be 15 14. minus 0 0.5, which becomes 14.5. And here I'm going to go up to 19.5. So when I'm representing this on the graph, I will start my boundary from 9.5 to 14.5. And then from 14.5, I'll go to 19. Do you see that there will be continuity? Do you see the continuity? Mm -hmm. Because the bars have to be together. So the next class will be 20 to 24. <clears throat> and the smallest this figure will be will be 19.5. And then here we shall go to 24.5. So if I'm to draw the histogram, what will I have? <clears throat> so here, instead of writing the class, I'm going to write my boundaries. So here I'm starting at 9.5, and then I'll end at 14.5. That's the first one. Then I come here, <clears throat> it will be 14.5 to... I can't see the bottom of the board. Yes, please. We can't see what yes, you're writing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <clears throat> Now we are plotting. I hope you can see that. So this time, instead of writing 10 to 19, here I'm going to write 9.5. <clears throat> then here I'll end at 14.5. Then for the next limit for the other class will be 14.5 to 19.5. So I'll simply write. 19.5. Then when I go to the next class, it's 19.5 to 24.5. Already the 19.5 is there. So what will I write? 24.5. Then the next one will be 29.5. Then the next one will be 34.5. <clears throat> the next one will be 39. Point five, okay. <clears throat> then the next one will be the next one will be forty four point five and so on. So our last class was was here. So we shall stop here. Forty four point five. So this time these are class boundaries, okay. <clears throat> then up was our frequency because we construct a histogram still using frequency, but this time we are using class boundaries. So the first frequency, you can use the same 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. So for the first class, our frequency was 2, was 3, sorry. So you identify your 3, and then you draw that. Teacher. Yes, please.
Um, I had lost connection a bit, but I would like to know how you get the 9.5 to 14.5. <clears throat> so, how do I get it? Because these bars are going to be together. Okay? Uh, Nakato, are you the one who asked the question? No, teacher, it's not me. Is, is your question different from what she has asked? Yes. Okay, what was yours? So that I can combine them. Um, does the place value change? It depends, yes. Depends on how big your data is. Sometimes the numbers are bigger than these. These are tens. If there were bigger figures, the place value would change. If there were decimals, sometimes they could give you data which has which is rounded off to one decimal place. Maybe they tell you 10.5, 11.2, 13.7. So when data is arranged that way, our 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 width won't be the same. It won't be 0.5. Now we'd have to find the last digit, which is a tens, and then we divide it by two. And then that will be the figure that you add or subtract, okay? So it depends on the data you are given. But when the numbers are in tens, eh, then we use the 0.5. I want to answer the girl who wanted to know how I get 9.5. <clears throat> uh, and and uh, Crystal, Diana, are your questions different? No, they are the same. The same as the one who wanted to know 9.5 to 14.5? Yes. Okay, so that is the question I'm going to hand. <clears throat> so I was saying, our bar graph is different from the histogram. How? The bars in a histogram are together. Okay, no space in between. When it was a bar graph, we moved from 10 to 14. Then there was space in there until we got to 15 to 19. When it is a histogram, the bars are together. So how will I write here 10, and then I'm supposed to write 14, yet the next bar is supposed to start at 15. How do I represent that, okay? Because between 14 and 15, we have a difference of one, okay? So how do you represent it on this? Then we find the limits. What is the biggest the class can be? What is the smallest the class can be? So those are the boundaries we get for the different classes. And I said, how do you get the boundaries? Look at the digit in the last, the last digit in the number, find its place value, divide it by two. So because our digit is in place value of ones, we, got, we write that place value as a number, divide by two, we ended up with, 0 0.5. So if I want to know my range, okay, my boundaries for whatever class with this kind of data, okay, I'm going to add or subtract what? 0 0.5. So if my class is 10 to 14, what is the smallest 10 can be? I will remove the 0 0.5. So it gives me 9.5. What is the biggest it can be? It can go up to 14.1. 14.5. So the range, the, the range for that class will become 9.5 to 14.5. Okay. Then when I go to the next class, which is 15 to 19, what is the smallest this can be? You subtract the 0 0.5. 15 minus 0 0.5 will give you 14.5. Okay. And then this will be 19.5. So if I'm representing this, then there will be continuity because for a histogram, it must be continuous. So, so I'll move from 9.5 to 14.5. And you can see that even in the next class, I'm starting at 14.5 to 19.5. When you go to the next class, you'll be starting at 19.5. So there'll be continuity because already the bars have to be together. Does it make sense? <clears throat> yes, teacher. Does it make sense? Yes, Crystal. Yeah. Any other question? Should I have a question? Yeah. Place yeah. Place yeah. I think. Yeah. Yes, please. So we can see the board clearly. You can see the board clearly. The board is not clear. Teacher, for me. Yes. 
Teacher, it's clear. So you see, clear. at least uh, you're the first one I've had. The board, I tested it, I don't know. What aren't you able to see? What can I make clear? <clears throat> the, the graph. No, 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 don't worry. I'm going to draw a better graph. I've been writing a lot, but I'm going to draw it again for you to understand. Okay? Yes, Docas. Yes, thank you. Teacher. Yes. Teacher, I have a, teacher, I have a question. Yes, ask your question, please. Teacher, why aren't we subtracting the 0 in 5 from the 14 and yet 10 is subtracting? Hey, no, 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 because 14 is the last digit. It's the higher value, OK? It is the higher value, so I can't subtract. When you're finding a limit, you're finding what is the smallest the digit can be and the biggest it can be. Remember, this is a class. This is not the last digit. I mean, the first digit in the class. The one will give you the smallest it can be. The last digit will, give, will go tell you how far you can go. So I can't subtract 14 from this class. But when I go to the next class, 15 to 19, still, how would I find the lower limit? I would subtract. How would I find the upper limit of the class? I add. Whenever you want a lower limit, you subtract. When it's an upper limit, you add. Is that okay? Thank yes, Nakato. Nakato. Um, teacher, I'm asking again about the place value. Yes. Why is it two? Why is it two? Hey, why two and not what, five? I don't know, three. <laughs> <laughs> no, now there are certain markings that we already found out. Eh? That how would I get that? That is the, that is the working. Then I get the place value and divide it by two, and it will work. So that is like the formula we have. How do I determine boundaries? Determine the place value of the last digit in the class and divide by two, and it will work. So that's so the, the last digit being, uh, for example, zero or four. Yes. Now, let me tell you, when I have a data that is in decimals, imagine you have 13.5, you have 3.7, you have 14.2, you have 7.9. Do you see that? that this present. You see that the last digit there is a decimal. That, that digit. It is five is the last digit, two is the last digit, seven, the last digit, nine is the last digit. But what is the place value of that digit? <clears throat> Ten. What is the place value? There's a decimal. Remember, these are ones, eh? These are tens. But what is the place value of this digit? <clears throat> it's a tens. A ten is six. 10 C, you write it like this because it is a decimal. It is a 10. So that is the place value, 10. Okay? So when I want to know all the boundaries, one over 10. Okay? That one over 10, you divide by 2. Okay? And when you divide one over 10 by 2, you'll get one of um, 20, which will give you 0 0.05. So this time, when you want to know that the ranges, okay, the boundaries, you're going to add or subtract 0 0.05. So there is a rule to it. Just remember the rule, you don't have to cram any figures, that when I want the limit, I need the plus value of the last digit, and I divide by two. Then you add subtract to get your limits. Is that okay? So, teacher, okay, the last question. Yes, please. Um, you, the one is the place value of the last number in the class. What did you say? The one, the, uh, the one out of two. Is, the one. Is <laughs> now, the place, the place value is 10 is C. 10 no, means I'm one out of 10. That. Hey. I'm asking the about that. The place value is 10. 
So it is one out of 10. Then we divide that one out of 10 by two. Yes, please. I'm, ask, I'm asking about the, the a half, the other one. Teacher, you have frozen. Teacher. Who is teacher?